What's up, everybody? My name is Kason. Welcome back to another Pokemon Draft League video. Today is going to be the top eight or quarter finals for the Master Ball Division of Puddle or Pokemon Ultra Draft League. For those of you guys that have been following along but haven't had a chance to take a look at the playoff bracket, here it is on the screen. And I was wanted to show this because I haven't done so yet. Hopefully it gives you guys a little better picture as to what we are looking at. Obviously last week we managed to pick up the win over Mr. Meg and the Castellia Moths. That was the seven versus eight matchup. The way that this bracket works is that there are 10 teams who make the playoffs out of the total of 16. The seeds seven through 10 essentially have an extra battle that they have to do. We already won that battle. So now we are in the top eight with all of these other teams. And the reward for winning that seven, eight matchup means you have to face off against the two seed of the league, which is none other than Kaz or Kaz the Weeb. He is the creator of this league. So huge, huge thank you to Kaz, because if not for him, I wouldn't even be a part of this. And honestly, it has been an absolutely amazing time up to this point. I've really, really enjoyed this. Um, it's been one of the most fun things I've done, period, in terms of gaming. So very, very cool. And I'm very excited for the matchup this week. If we somehow can take Kaz down, somehow the two seed, we will be awaiting Brett, who is actually the team that beat us in the week eight matchup that is the video that i have not uploaded yet um i do still plan on uploading it i've had a weird situation in terms of timing on how i want to do that i still haven't like edited it and stuff like that um but anyway hopefully that's still coming down the pipe but regardless we're focusing on today we're focusing on today's matchup and that is against him with the detroit blue flares they are the two-seeded uh team they had a 6-2 record in the regular season. Now, the thing about this is they started off the season 0-2. He made some moves, adding, dropping certain Pokemon to his roster. Hasn't lost since. And ironically, the last loss that he has on his record was Week 2 against the team that we took over for. So it used to be named the Average Joes. A couple of those Pokemon are still on our roster, but for the most part, this is a very, very different team than the one that beat Kaz in week two. So regardless of whether our old team beat him, I don't know how much that actually matters. But taking a look at the matchup between our team and his, some interesting things going on. First of all, the speed tiers in the middle, as always, something I always really wanna try and look at. One thing that's going to jump out at me is Ogrepan and Palucha both outspeed everything enamorous or below. This is really useful because Lycanroc, if he doesn't show up, it means I have three Pokemon that can potentially outspeed the entire roster on his side. That can be something that I can really take advantage of, and uh, I will try to, obviously. Taking a look at the Terra Captains he has on his roster, he has that really fast Lycanroc day form with Terra Rock, Terra Fairy, and Terra Dark. I don't think he is going to show up, though. If he does, I think the only situation he would do that is if he sets up manual sand, but I don't see him going that route. I think it's way more likely that he does bring his other Terra Captain, Orthworm, who has Terra Steel, Terra Ghost, and Terra Electric. Um, Orthworm is just insanely bulky to physical damage, and honestly, a lot of my team is physical damage users, so I think there's a decent chance he brings him. Overall, the threats that I'm most worried about on his roster, I think a either Choice Scarf or Choice Specs Enamorous on the other side, other side could be very, very spooky. It also does get access to the ability uh, Cute Charm, which essentially gives you a chance to put the Attract condition onto a Pokemon if they are the opposite gender. So that is something I have to uh, make note of. I basically have to try and make all of my Pokemon female for this week to make sure I don't get caught off guard by that. I know that he likes to Choice Scarf his Tentacruel very often. Tentacruel is another scary mon that I could see coming. But honestly, the biggest problems for me, trying to get around Gudra, Orthworm, and Torterra. I think those are the ones that spook me the most. But let's jump into the team and see how I combat that. First and foremost here, we are leading off with our Terra Captain, Ram9, aka Glastrier. Now, this is a guy who I've brought almost every single week, but honestly, uh, for a good reason. This thing has been really, really dominant throughout the season. We are running a Choice Band item on it this week with max attack, max HP. We are doing minimum speed. We're trying to make it as slow as possible. We are running Terra Ice on it. So with Terra Ice and Choice Band, if we click Terra Blast, honestly, we are going to nuke the hell out of almost everything on his roster. He only has two Pokemon, period, that resist the Ice type. And that is Orthworm and that is Tentacruel. Even a Tentacruel gets easily two hit KO'd by this thing. And I believe if we are plus one from our Chilling Nay passive, we still one shot it. That is how crazy uh, powerful this thing is. So we are running four different moves, obviously. We're running the Terra Blast. 
fast. I'm running this instead of Icicle Crash because Icicle Crash has a chance to miss and is only five damage more than Terra Blast. I plan on Terra Icing this thing the first turn that it is out there just for extra damage, so it doesn't really matter. The other ice move that we are running is Avalanche. If I'm in a situation where I think it's better off to be stuck into Avalanche, if I know that I'm going to be slower than the opposing Pokemon and I think I'm going to get hit, Avalanche would be more damage than Terra Blast and it also cannot miss. I have close combat here mainly just for one specific Pokemon and that is the Orthworm. I'm hoping to catch it off guard if there is a certain position where uh, we both come in fresh. He thinks that he's safe against the ice type damage and I click close combat and do about 75% of his HP bar. For the last move, honestly, there's very little that I want to use here, especially on a choice band set because 99% of the time, I'm just gonna lock myself into an ice move. But for certain rare situations, I do have the move Roar. There are a bunch of Pokemon in his team that do wanna click setup moves. So if I can avoid that um, from basically taking me down, I'm going to bring in Roar to do that. The next Pokemon that we're going to bring to the roster is numero 80 are indeedy uh, we are bringing it along this week for a couple of different reasons first of all this thing is going to make our glastrier the mvp this week or at least that is what i'm hoping for we are bringing trick room this week which essentially means the fastest pokemon goes last and the slowest pokemon goes first if we can set up trick room for four turns switch into our glastrier we should hopefully have three turns where our glass reader is not only going to nuke the hell out of everything, it's also going to be the fastest thing on the field. The one weakness about glass reader is the fact that it's slow, but we are going to turn that on its head this week. As I said, there are so few things on Kaz's roster that can take a choice panned Terra Ice Glass Trio that if we are able to get that thing to rip off a few attacks, the game could very, very quickly get out of hand. We also have the move Psychic just for some extra damage, and we have Baton Pass and Healing Wish both as methods to get our glass rear or another Pokemon in safely. In terms of the EV spreads, all of these numbers are correct, except the nature, the minus special attack plus speed, that is actually incorrect. I did change that. I think it is a bold nature, uh, but I don't remember for sure. And for our item this week, we we're actually running Mental Herb. So this is something that I decided to throw on because if the opposing uh, Pokemon does try and go for something like a Taunt to prevent us from using moves like Trick Room or Baton Pass and things like that. Mental Herb will essentially be a one-time use, but will shake off that Taunt, allowing us to get our Trick Room off guaranteed. It is very, very important for this thing right here for numero 80 to be able to click tr Trick Room. If it cannot, it is not nearly as valuable as it otherwise would be. That is the main reason for bringing it. That being said though, its Psychic actually can hit fairly hard into his team though, so it could still do some damage, even if it's not allowed to get that Trick Room off. Next up the bat though, I wanted a lead Pokemon that could be pretty effective. Now, I am basically going to do one of two things in this battle. I'm either going to lead Glastrier if he doesn't have enough Pokemon. Uh, like for example, if he doesn't bring Orthworm, I think there's a decent chance I just lead Glastrier and literally just click Terra Blast on turn one. However, if he does have something like that Orthworm, I think there's a decent chance he could lead it, which means in this, uh, in that situation, I want to have somebody else who can function very well there. And that is going to be our 25th BAM Ogre Pond Cornerstone for this week. 224 investment into speed, max attack, a little bit of HP. This is going to make it so we are faster than everything on his team, unless it's Choice Scarfed or it is the Lycanroc. Lycanroc automatically is going to outspeed us anyway if he's max speed, which he normally would be though. Uh, so that is why we are doing that uh, investment. Obviously, the ability in the item can't change. We're sturdy and we're cornerstone mass. But for the moves, this is a different set than something we have ran before. We are running Ivy Cudgel because the attack is just honestly broken. Uh, it is super effective into three different Pokemon on his roster. There are quite a few Pokemon who do resist the Ivy Cudgel, though. And for those Pokemon, we have the move Low Kick. This is a really sneaky tech to bring in, especially against the Gudra Husuian, who would normally resist both our rock and grass coverage low kick hits it extremely hard if it is not if it does not have any defensive investment it has a tiny percent chance basically to one hit ko it uh, it's unlikely that's going to happen but it is still going to chunk the hell out of it regardless i also wanted to have some form of, of hazards to be able to put on the field so we are bringing spikes on ogre pond this week and we are also most importantly running the move taunt now, this is here to do a ton of things. It is here to stop him from setting up Stealth Rocks, which he has multiple good users who can do that, stopping spikes being used. Um, it's also to stop them from doing any sort of setup moves. Uh, Gudra can use something like Acid Armor, 
Um, the uh, Gouging Fire can do Dragon Dance. He has a lot of these kinds of moves where he's going to boost up his stats, and if we can use Taunt to prevent him from doing that, it can slow the pace of his team down, allowing me to get into who I need safely, and I think ultimately this is going to be a very effective lead, especially if he does bring that Worthworm this week. The next Pokemon up to bat, this is another basic, basic win condition for my team. And I said before, there's only two Pokemon that resist ice type damage on his team. Well, there's also only two Pokemon that resist water type damage on his team, which means rain, it can be really, really effective into his roster. Because of this, we are bringing some Smarty the Pelipper, and we are running it bulky as hell with max HP, a ton of defensive investment with a bold nature and 128 investment in a special attack to also just give that little bit of oomph in terms of damage. We are making it as slow as possible because I do, if I set up the rain, want to be able to switch out very slowly so that the thing that I switch in can be fully healthy. This is very, very uh, important based off the last Pokemon that I will show on the roster this week, but just know that is very, very much intended. We have the Drizzle ability, which means we set up the rain, and our item Damp Rock makes it so that rain not only lasts five turns, it lasts eight turns when we come in with the Pelipper. We've got the Hurricane and Weather Ball for coverage, which is great. Water and flying coverage should hit almost everything on this roster very, very well. U-turn, again, is here for Pivot. It's so that I can set up the rain and basically switch myself out. And knockoff is really important too because there's multiple Pokemon on the other roster who I think could have items that I really want to get rid of. He has some really bulky mons. If I can get rid of something like an Assault Vest or Leftovers, that can make it so that some of those bulky mons can be killed much easier. It could also be a situation where I don't know if he would do this, but in a separate week against a different opponent, he brought Utility Umbrella Gouging Fire because he thought there was a chance that Rain would come on the other side. Well, my team is much more focused on Rain than that team was that he played against. Um, and if you guys don't know what Utility Umbrella is, it basically negates the effects of either Sun or Rain being on the field for that Pokemon wearing it. So normally his Gouging Fire is going to be really weak into the Rain. If he does bring something like Utility Umbrella, I could always hit a knockoff if I manage to catch it. That could be really important to basically neuter its damage. So overall, I think setting up the rain could be really advantageous, especially because of this next Pokemon that we're bringing this week. And now this set is not something I've really ran before yet. This was something that I had plans for when I picked this guy. Or I didn't really pick him, but I kept him on the roster. Something I never really saw an opportunity to really use, though. And now it is here. There is an opportunity to use it. We are running max HP with 92 investment into special attack, a little bit of special defense investment, and also 128 in speed. This is MRDC, RR Chaladon, and it is running Stamina and Assault Vest. So the same item as last week makes it a little bulkier to those special attacks, and overall should be pretty tanky in general. Now, uh, I will be completely transparent. This EV spread is not perfectly tuned. Uh, the original EV spread that I did was this, and the reason that I did it was because I was originally running Choice Scarf on it, and the Choice Scarf was making it just fast enough to outspeed his entire roster. I ended up switching the item because overall I thought Assault Vest would be better, especially if he brings the Torterra, because if I lock myself in with Choice Scarf onto the Electro Shot, Torterra could give me massive problems. So I opted for the Assault Vest and forgot to switch the EV spread on here, but that is okay. Honestly, the kind of random speed investment might actually catch him off guard with 128 EVs. He might not anticipate me to put that kind of investment in there, so it could actually work out for me regardless. In terms of the moves, we have Electro Shot again in the rain. This is a one turn move instead of a two. It not only gives us a plus one boost to our special attack, but hits really, really hard. And the electric uh, type damage is actually pretty good into his roster as well. Not too many Pokemon that resist it. Also hitting multiple mons super effectively, such as the Enamorous or the Mandibuzz or the Tentacruel. We have Draco Meteor here to hit things like the Gouging Fire super effectively. And that can hit really, really hard, especially if we've already gotten an Electro Shot boost. Body presses here, as always, it's just one of the best moves to run on MRDC here because he gets his defense up so high from just naturally being hit. And last but not least, probably the most important move to bring this week is Dragon Tail. I've said it before, I'll say it again. He has a lot of Pokemon that want to set up, want to click moves that boost themselves up. And if he is able to do that and I can't kill that thing that is in front of me, Dragon Tail 
moves last in the turn order, but it kicks out that Pokemon into somebody else. And if that Pokemon gets kicked out, they lose their stat boost. So it is a very, very important that I bring Dragon Tail this week to try and slow any of that down. And last but not least, though, we have our other rain abuser. We have SOTK, which stands for Symphony of the Knights. That is Maverick's WDL team. This guy is normally named Maverick. However, full transparency we are running the ability battle bond this week instead of protean and in this league i've said it before you can gen pokemon which is basically you like artificially trade for them rather than having to uh do the evs and all that kind of stuff every single week if you had to do that manually this would literally take like i don't know how many hours every single week nobody has time for that that being said in order to get a battle bond greninja it is really really strange it's a really weird thing you can't choose its gender and you can't, you can only do so much with its name. You basically get four characters uh, is basically what I'm saying. So instead of doing Maverick, I did SOTK in honor of him. That is his WDL team name, but we're running Battle Bond. We're running Choice Specs this week instead of Protean, something different. And I'm really excited about it. We've got 80 EVs into the HP, 252 into Special Attack. So I'm maxing that out and we're just fast enough to outspeed everything on his team unless they're Choice Scarfed or have a speed boost. We are running Surf. Instead of Weather Ball, this is mainly so that if I don't have Rain anymore, this thing can still hit really, really hard. Weather Ball is slightly stronger with 10 uh, extra damage, but I didn't think it was worth it in case I run out of Rain. I wanted to be able to still click Surf and have a deal of damage. Water Shuriken is here for priority, so if I am in a spot where I need to outspeed something, if something else is Choice Scarfed or got a speed boost, I can hit Water Shuriken to deal uh, good damage. Dark Pulse, again, another just really good coverage option. Also, if I'm in a weird spot where I know that I need to flinch the opposing Pokemon, I can potentially resort to that to try and offer that. And U-Turn ultimately for Pivot to try and get myself out safely into something else. So this is ultimately the team, you guys. I'm really excited for this week. I'll be completely honest. I think my team is actually really good on paper into Kaz's team, but I think Kaz thinks that as well, which means he is probably going to bring some weird shit this week and stuff that I might not actually anticipate. So the fact that my team is good into him on paper could potentially bite me in the ass depending on what he brings. Well, ultimately, I hope we put on a good show for you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the fight. All right, guys, we are loaded into the battle here versus Kaz the Weeb, coach of the Detroit Blue Players. And taking a look at what he brought, he brought a lot of what I expected. However, there's no... Gudra, which is a bit of a surprise. Um, I kind of love that because that's normally the Dragon Tail user, which means if I have Indeedee in at any point, I probably get my Trick Room off no problem. But he has the Orthworm for Stealth Rocks. He's got Hazards with Tentacruel and he's got Hazards with Annihilate. So he's three Hazard users, which means I pretty much have to lead Bam here because if I don't, he's going to get them up for free and I don't have Hawlucha to defog and I don't have a Rapid Spinner. So Okay, so here's what I'm thinking for this battle. Right now, this looks really good on paper for especially our Chalodon because one of his two electric resistances are not here. Unless he Terra Electrics the Orthworm, um, he only has one electric resistance, which means our Chalodon in the rain goes crazy here. It goes absolutely nuts. But I lead Ogre Pond because he's probably going to lead some sort of Hazard Setter. He's got three different ones, and I think I pretty much have to click Taunt if he does that. If he leads something that doesn't have Hazards, I might just be able to lead with an Ivy Cudgel. We'll see how it goes. So he goes Shelby, which is the Orthworm. Okay, so I'm super glad that I brought Ogre Pond then. I think I have to click Taunt. I want to click Low Kick here, so I think I have to click Taunt here. I want to click Low Kick but it's never a one-shot. It's at best a two-hit KO. And if he goes for something like a coil, that could be trouble. So Taunt makes it so that he can't set up any hazards, and he also can't click coil. He can't sit up in front of me. I'm hoping to not see body press. It is Stealth Rock. Let's go. Okay. That is a perfect start. Um, and now I think I freely kick, or freely choose low kick here, because, I mean, he could go either Annihilate or Enamorous and resist this. Um... But everything else is, like, decent. And I'm hoping he just stays in and wants to go for a body press. I really want to get rid of this thing. I really want to get rid of this thing. I hope he stays in. He's probably going to switch either to Enamorous or Annihilate, to be honest. Although, I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't predict the low kick. He does withdraw. Okay. I was going to say, I don't I don't know how common low kick is on Ogre Pond. This is the first time I've brought it. But it's just good into his team. He does go Annihilate, so we're not going to do any damage here. But now... So we're not in a great spot here because he could either Drain Punch or Close Combat. Um, and I don't have Sarah Ledge to soak that. 
but there's nothing on my team that really wants to eat that other than Pelipper, and I would rather... The problem is, I could see him just going for a Stealth Rock because he knows he has the advantage here, so I think I want to click Taunt again. Again, he has so many Hazard Setters. Ogre Pond doesn't need to carry here. I just want to make sure that he doesn't get rocks and spikes and toxic spikes and all that stuff up. Because if he does, that's a huge problem. Because I don't have a way to get rid of him. So I'm hoping I taunt here and he clicks Stealth Rock again. He does already know that I have Taunt, though, which means he could go for something. Uh, go for damage. So he goes first, which means he is Scarfed. So he one-shots with Close Combat. Sturdy keeps us alive. Which means this taunt is really bad because he probably doesn't even have rocks. So now we're at 1 HP is not great, but he is locked into close combat. So at least we can use that to our advantage. Um, but the only thing that wants to take this is some smarty. So I think I have to go here. I think I have to swap in here. He's locked into close combat. If he's... Okay, he doesn't switch because he'd be faster. So he stays in. So this is great. So we should eat this close combat. No problem. We are bulky. We resist it. We're in a good spot. Okay, so it does lead another close combat. That does like 74. Okay, that's really solid. He's now minus two defense. Uh, minus two special defense too, which means there's no way he lets me hurricane here. Hurricane kills in one shot. There's no way he's just going to give me this annihilate. Zero chance. Um, I could swap calling that. I feel like the most likely scenario would he be go to Orthworm, maybe? To go, like, Terra Electric to kill... No, that wouldn't make sense, because he's physically bulky, not special. I don't know who he's going into, but he's going to switch here. There's no way he stays in with a minus two Annihilate. I'm just trying to think. So the cost of over-predicting here is really low, because worst case scenario, he just close combats for another 70 damage. I think I just want to knock off. Because... I don't think he's going to stay in. Thank God. Okay, he does switch. If Honestly, if I knocked off that Scarf, that wouldn't necessarily be great for me. Because then he could freely do something else. What is Sushi? Tentacruel. Honestly, this thing could be Scarfed. He likes to run Choice Scarf Tentacruel. I know he's ran it a couple times throughout the season, but it's Black Sludge. So this thing is tankier. Not necessarily fast. Um, I'm trying to think here. So I could U-turn. This thing is going to be faster than me. Because we are intentionally slow, and I think... Tentacruel's 100 base. I think i just go MRDC here. I don't think there's anything he could do to damage me. But now do I want to hard switch or U-turn is the question. I know I want to go to MRDC. This thing could... I think I hard switch, honestly. Because if he hits me with something, I'd rather be plus one defense. And if he doesn't attack and goes for a toxic spike, I'd rather just have... I'd rather just have this thing in. Although if it is a toxic spike, he's not going to take any damage from it anyway because he's steel. I don't know. I probably could have freely U-turned. That's probably a mistake, hard switching here, but we'll see. But he stays in because he would have been faster. He does go for Toxic Spikes, so unfortunately Hazards are on the field. Um, but we are in a fantastic position because now I can freely click Electro Shot. There is nothing that wants to eat this. The only thing that resists this on his team is a Gouging Fire. Literally everything else takes neutral damage from this. So I'm going to need plus one guarantee. There's no way he can change the weather out of rain right now. He would have to switch in something else that could manually change it. MRDC goes so hard into his team. And he stays in. Wow. I don't know if we kill here. I am not max special attack. So we probably don't. But we'll see. Well, I don't know what kind of investment this thing is. It's Black Sludge, which means it's probably bulkier. We do not kill. Um, and it goes for knockoff. Okay. That's actually not the worst case. I'm actually almost glad we didn't kill because now we're plus one defense. We lose our Assault Vest, which sucks, but now I'm just Electro-Shotting again. There's no thought to be had here. I'm just going to click this again. There's no reason not to. Nothing else wants to switch into a plus two Electro-Shot. I imagine he's just going to sack this thing. I don't know what else he would want to take chip on. Yeah, he does just get rid of it. Honestly, the knockoff is great. I'm just uh, happy that it wasn't another set of Toxic Spikes. If he went for two layers, that could be really bad, because that's badly poisoned instead of normal. So honestly, really good. We get rid of his Toxic Spikes user. He still has other hazards, but at least we're not going to be hard poisoned. So we're first on the board. That's the first kill. So we're up 6-5. We're plus 2 special attack, plus 1 defense. I imagine he goes Annihilate here, right? But I don't know. Does a close combat kill us from this range? We're plus 1. I think he has to go Annihilate here. I don't know what else he can bring in that's going to do a lot of damage. With the rain up, there's no way that Gouging Fire can hurt us. Not not a lot, anyway. Not at plus one defense. 
So it is the Annihilate, so I imagine he's just going to click Close Combat, right? Problem is, I can predict that and go into some Smarty, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to take any extra chip. There's nothing else that wants to take this. I need to calc a plus two Electro Shot. Hold on. I need to see my defense stat here. 296, 384 HP. Okay, so everything I am seeing here, plus two Electro Shot should kill, and we should live a plus one Close Combat. So we should be able to kill this thing in this turn. So I think I just got to rip this. Oh, it goes for Final Gambit. Oh, that is such a good play. Well done, Kaz. That's a great play. That was a great play by him. Final Gambit, um, for any of you guys who are not crazy big Pokemon players, Final Gambit kills yourself when you use it, but you do the amount of current HP you had to the opposing Pokemon. So he had more HP than I did. So it kills us both. Which is honestly a great play by him. We're... We're up 5-4, but one of us is 1 HP. This is really even now. Um, I think I just go Greninja, right? With Annihilate and Tentacruel out, this thing goes crazy. There's like nothing that can live this in the rain with Battle Bond. I literally think just clicking Surf kills almost everything on his team. I didn't expect to bring this thing in this fast. So he does go Orthworm. So I'm almost certain... I need to calc this. So we might, I think we, with the Toxic, maybe not. But there's a chance we could live a Body Press, um, which I think should do more than Electric Terra Blast. But I don't even think it matters, because from what I am seeing, Surf in the rain just literally kills. Because even Terra Electric is super effective against water, but it doesn't resist. So I literally just click Surf here. I think this just kills this thing. Uh, maybe he didn't calc for Choice Specs? I don't know why else he would bring this in, but honestly, he doesn't really have much to switch in for this. Mandibuzz is probably the best opportunity. I'm just going to click Surf. So he does Terra. I'm assuming it's Terra Electric. Terra Electric is crazy good in my team. But unless he's Focus Sash, which that would be like a really weird item on Orthworm. Unless, I mean, honestly, wouldn't surprise me. I knew he'd have to bring some weird stuff this week to try and beat me. This could be a weird set like Focus Sash. It is not, though. We knock it out. Let's go, dude. Well, with Battle Bond, we are plus one speed, plus one special attack. At plus one, um, dude, I, I feel Maverick, or Symphony of the Night slash Maverick, whatever you want to call him, might literally just carry this fight right now. He's going to be a plus one for both. I don't know, man. In the rain, I don't think anything lives it. Maybe Mandibuzz, but that's it. He's got three months left. SOTK might just go crazy here. We'll see. So he does Fish Lips. <laughs> Who's <laughs> fish lips? Oh, enamorous. Oh, that's funny. I've never noticed its lips before, but those are those are out there. Um, there's no way this thing lives, which tells me this is probably Choice Scarf. No, if it was Choice Scarf, he would have brought it out last time, right? If this is Choice Scarf, we could be in trouble. But there's no better opportunity for Greninja to hit right now than right now. If we go first, then I think we just win the game. I don't know what he's going to do if we kill this thing right here, but there's a chance this thing is Choice Scarf. There were a few mounds I was worried about. This, Tentacruel, and Annihilate. Annihilate was already Scarf, but I would not be surprised if he ran double Scarf this week. But the fact that he's thinking this hard about it tells me he's probably not. Unless he doesn't realize I'm Choice Specs, he could think but with how much damage I was doing. I, I don't know. He's not Scarf. Let's go. This has to kill. Unless it's Sash. It does. Oh my gosh. This is crazy. This is wild. This game is going really, really fast. But I knew this had a chance of doing it. The rain does run out. So he stalls out his rain turns, out the rain turns, so well done by him. I could always save this thing too, but honestly, I think Trick Room, Trick Room with Glass Rear in the back just wins, like, every time. So I'm just going to click Surf again. I think this is literally, like, the least thinking that I've ever done in a match because I'm just in a spot where it just makes sense to just keep clicking the button. That does so much damage. In the rain, we 100% would have killed Fire Spin. Um... Intr so why did why did he go for fire spin here? Although I guess I don't know what other movie he would have went for. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Wait, why was it? Isn't fire spin one eight? That looked like more than that. I'm surfing again. I mean, I'm not thinking about this. Burning bolt. Okay, okay, good play. Wow. Okay, actually, now this makes a ton of sense. The fire spin makes a lot of sense now. Now with the burning bolt work, he protects. I can't hurt him. He can literally kill me if. If this kills me here with Poison and Burn, I don't know how much it's going to do. I'm not badly poisoned, though, just normal, which is huge. Fire Spin doesn't kill, right? 50 damage? Why does it do so much? He's going to have to go for another Burning Bulwark. 
The only way he wins this game is if he gets another Protect here. Otherwise, we just claim a kill. Unless he switches into Mandibuzz, I don't think he's going to do that. Mandibuzz would live because we're not in rain. He does switch. Okay. So he doesn't go for the double protect. That actually does make sense, honestly, because his probably only minor win condition that he has here is the Gouging Fire. So Surf's going to come out. That almost kills. Dude, Greninja is just going insane right now. It does finally die to the poison, but took out, I think, two Mons and almost a third. Almost four, basically. Just going crazy. Now, what do I do here? How do I guarantee this win? Because we have two low mons on the other side. We have three. I don't think I can lock into Ram 9. Because if he has foul play and a fire type attack on gouging, he could kill me. Although, I think Pelipper just wins in the back no matter what. Do I swap here? No, I think I go Numero here. I think I have to go Numero here. I don't know what he could do about this. I just click Trick Room. Knockoff does not one-shot us. It could do like 80-90%. Unless this thing is like choice banned. Dude, if, if he's choice banned Mandibuzz with knockoff, then well friggin' played. I think I go into this and I click Trick Room. If I get Trick Room off, it's game over, because neither one of these Pokemon lives Terra Ice, Choice Band, Glass Rear. So this this battle comes down to this turn. I don't think he can do anything if we get Trick Room up. So I'm clicking this. He's just got two low mons. He does go for a roost. That's probably the right play, I think. I don't know what else he has, to be fair, but I don't know what else he could go for. We get the Trick Room off. And now, do I click... Yeah, just click Baton Pass. I don't think there's any reason I go for Healing Wish here, because neither one of my Mons are low. I just Baton Pass. And he is faster in Trick Room, which is great. So we take the Chunk, but it doesn't hit our Glass Rear. That is even better, because that means we don't take Chip. So, Trick Room happened, this turn goes, now we're going to have three more turns after this in Trick Room. So we are the fastest thing out there and we easily one-shot both. I think the only way he can win... Can he win? If he... So there's like a 0.1% chance that he could win this game, I think, if he has the right moves. I'm clicking this, but if he dies here, there's two turns left. He would have to get a double protect with Burning Bulwark. He'd have to double protect with Gouging Fire and then somehow kill on the next turn, which honestly, I don't think he one-shots this Glass Trigger no matter what. Um, and Terra Blast is also really good because it does not proc the burn from Burning Bulwark. So even if he goes for that, um, we should be fine. Terra Blast is going to come out. This is a kill. Should be, yeah. Okay, so Mana Buzz is down. And we are now plus one Choice Banded Terra Ice. So, I think the only way we could ever lose this, ever. No, I don't think we can. Because Ogre Pond's going to be faster than Gouging Fire outside of Trick Room. I think we just win. We should be able to win with Glass Rear right here. And wow, this game got this game got kind of out, out of control fast, but I'm here for it. This is awesome. He's going to click Burning Bulwark. Yep, I was going to say, there's no way he doesn't. So, he gets to Protect... Um, he's going to see that this does not burn my, my Glass Trier. There's no contact with Terra Blast, which is also really huge. But he's going to go for it again. I'm just going to click Terra Blast again. I basically just pressing A until I die. <laughs> until I win or lose. Just pressing A. It's the only thing to do. So we'll see if he gets a double protect. This is the last turn of Trick Room. He goes for it. He, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. That's going to be a win. Oh my gosh. Dude... <laughs> I honestly, this like feels kind of bittersweet because I I love this league. It's been so much fun. I'm so excited to make the top four. And this is really, really cool. But I hate to beat Kaz. He's an awesome dude. And he's the one who let me in this league. So honestly, I like I I feel like I should feel better than I do right now. I'm excited to win. But man, it sucks. It sucks to beat him. But it was one of those things is like my roster just matches up really, really well in this team. But man, huge shout out to you, Kaz. Uh, awesome dude, awesome player. And uh, thank you, thank you very much for the battle. It was a lot of fun. Honestly, you had a couple of really, really cool techs in there. So mad shout out to the Fire Spin and the Final Gambit. Those were really, really awesome. All right, guys, with the battle over and done with, we are going to be heading into the semifinals next week, which is really, really surreal. With 16 awesome teams, awesome players, 
we've made it to the top four, which is really, really damn cool. This is my first uh, draft league season for Pokemon. So to, to be doing this well um, just feels really great, honestly. It's pretty, pretty awesome. I want to give a massive, massive shout out to my opponent this week, Kaz, Kaz the Weeb. Guys, it would literally mean the world to me if you go check out his YouTube and or Twitch channel. I'm going to leave the description down below in the video. Um, a lot of these guys uh, put in a lot of work in terms of making their videos and all this kind of stuff. And Kaz especially runs the entire league. So for a lot of you guys who are part of my WDL uh, for War of the Visions and you know how much stuff that I do for that league, Kaz does a lot of that for this. So please go show your appreciation. Uh, if you enjoyed these videos at all from me, please go show your appreciation to him. You know, leave him a nice comment down uh, in below in one of his videos or something like that. I'm sure he would really, really appreciate it. So shout out to Kaz, absolutely awesome player. Honest to God, I think it was a really rough matchup for him. Um, that's not me like bragging. That's just my team just matches up really, really well. It's just a bit unfortunate, I think. I think of all the rosters, not the players, but the rosters, I think this is probably the worst draw for him. Um, I have such a, a big rain core. The fact that he only has two water resists and he only has two ice resists, which one of my terror captains is Glastrier, it's pretty brutal for him. Honestly, I thought he brought out a couple of really awesome, amazing techs that were really, really fun. So shout out to Kaz for bringing the heat. But next week is a rematch against Brett. And uh, Brett, we have already played. We played in week eight. I have not uploaded that video yet, and I'm going to be uploading that this week. I think it's especially only fair to Brett so that he gets to see uh, my point of view from the original match and all the sets that I brought because his video was up and I get to see what he brought. So in all fairness, uh, I really should try and get that video up as soon as possible. So not only you guys can watch, but also he can watch. But uh, yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for you know going on this Pokemon journey with me. It's been really, really fun. I know this is different than a lot of the content I've put out in the past, but this has been a blast for me as a player, and I am beyond thrilled uh, that I get to keep going. I get to get a rematch against one of the best players I've faced all season, maybe the best battler I've faced all season in Brett. So that's really, really exciting. Don't know what's going on in the other side of the bracket yet, but it should be awesome. So thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day.